while working remote or in a hybrid kind of an environment without a disconnected feeling from manager or our colleagues. But at the same time, today's work environment requires new tools for organizations to thrive. And then uh, the answer to that is Microsoft Viva. And in this session, we are specifically looking into the Microsoft Viva connections end to end, how, how to set it up, and then how to extend that with SharePoint framework. So uh, this is the agenda for this session. We will have a quick overview of Microsoft Viva. I know that uh, throughout the day you have been listening to Microsoft Viva, but still just to get started, set the context, we will have a quick overview of Viva and all of the modules. Then we will deep dive into uh, Microsoft Viva connections specifically, how to set it up that as well as how to enable the Viva connections app in Microsoft Teams. And when once it is done, um, then the uh, de developer's point of view, how we'll be able to extend Viva connections with SharePoint Framework or SPFX. Before we start the session, quick introduction. Uh, myself, Nandadeep Nasan, I'm Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services, author of couple of book on SharePoint Framework and SharePoint Hybrid. And on to the right hand side, here are a few of the social media handles to get in touch with me. And with me today is Smita. Hello, myself Smita Natsan. I am from Pune, India. So currently I'm working with uh, Tieto. I'm a Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm author of one book and these are my social handlers by which you can get in touch with me. So now let's see what are these hybrid working and the challenges. So many organizations across all the industries have shifted to the remote and hybrid work and this change represents the new opportunity and the challenges. So the organizations are finding ways of how to make this new world of work more sustainable for their people. And this requires transforming the additional models of work and culture. So hybrid work is becoming a new norm across the many industries. So creating a great employee experience is more challenging than ever because the people feel stressed and disconnected. So employee wants to feel more connected. Leaders need a modern way to engage with their employees. Also, the IT needs to quickly enable the modern employee experience without replacing their existing system. And to address these issues, companies require a new approach and a new category of technology solutions, which is called EXP, Employee Experience Platforms. So to meet these needs, Microsoft has created Microsoft Viva, an employee experience platform that empowers people and teams to do their best from virtually anywhere. So let's have a very short introduction of Viva because you already got an idea what is the Viva. So Viva brings together the communication, knowledge, learning, resources, and insights into an integrated experience that empowers people and teams to do their best from anywhere, powered by the full breadth and depth of Microsoft 365. And it is experienced to Microsoft Teams and other Microsoft 365 apps that people use the every day. So the Viva, Modules, Viva includes the four modules, Viva Connection, Viva Insight, Viva Learning, and Viva Topics. Let's see all of them one by one. So first one is the Viva Connection. So the Viva Connections provides a curated, personalized, and company-branded experience that centralizes relevant news and conversations. So Viva Connections provide a single entry point for employee engagement and internal communications. So this can be referred as a gateway to your digital workspace. So the Viva connection is built on Microsoft 365 capabilities like a SharePoint to provide a curated and branded employee destination and the leaders can connect with employees via company town halls and company can access everything from company news, policies and benefits to employee resource groups or communicate communities they want to join with Microsoft Viva's integration to Yammer. So second one is the Viva Insights. So the Viva Insights gives individuals, managers and leaders personalized and actionable privacy protected insight that help everyone in an organization thrive. So it brings a new personal well-being experiences, insights and recommended actions from workplace analytics and my analytics into the flow of people's work in Microsoft team. The third one is the Viva Learning. So the Viva Learning helps makes the learning a natural part of both every employee's daily work and company culture. So with Viva Learning, employee can easily discover and share everything from training courses to micro learning content. 
and the fourth one is the viva topics so the viva topics enables you to harness the knowledge of your organization and connect the people to that knowledge so the viva topic is like a wikipedia with ai superpowers for your organization so when employees click on a card a topic page appears with the documents videos and related people so the viva topics is also surfaces the information from the third party services like a service now and salesforce so now let's see how to set up and launch the viva connections so the microsoft viva connection is a desktop and a mobile experience that brings together relevant news conversations and the resources in one place for your organization it's built on your current microsoft 365 ecosystem and powered by sharepoint to help you to engage inform and empower your hybrid workplace so the viva connection experience is deployed and accessed in microsoft teams so you have to use the step by step instruction to help you i think sampan is not in mute So you have to use this step by step instruction to help you to set up and launch the Viva connections or you, on your desktop and mobile devices using a currently available features to create an engaging user experience. So these are those uh, edge steps, edge steps that you can see onto the screen. So uh, th there are steps related from technical point of view as well as the business point of view. So we are going to cover all those eight points so that, for example, if you have a plain vanilla environment just uh, e3 or not e3 probably e5 in that case you will be able to set up this viva connections and again viva connections is uh, pretty much free so even you can follow these steps along with us so that you will be able to set it up on your tenant so we'll walk through each of those steps but quickly it's like firstly you need to have a sharepoint internet with you secondly you should have a home site to be set on sharepoint internet then there is something called as global navigation and, and app bar those should be enabled mostly from the mobile experience and then we we have uh, a nice simpler uh, dashboards and cards which should be placed on that the fifth step here is like now that we have our uh, internet setup from which are the sources from where we should be able to get the relevant content to our users so that they will feel connected and then now that microsoft teams is at the center of everything so we will see how to bring that entire experience into microsoft teams and then again we do have various types of users including the information workers as well as the uh, remote workers or the frontline workers so for them how to enable the mobile settings so that everyone will be a part of your entire digital work workplace and then they will be able to perform their task very, very efficiently and then lastly how you will be able to educate your users and then launch this viva connection successfully so with that uh, let's get into the first step to prepare your internet so again um, Sh sharepoint uh, is the first choice whenever we are preparing any kind of an internet sharepoint has got a rich history of over two decades where it is serving um everyone or each of the industry as an internet so obviously with microsoft 365 we are going to use sharepoint as our internet but ju just one point to note here is that you need to have uh, modern sharepoint in place for you for example if you are still using uh, classic internet even in microsoft 365 world in that case probably you will be missing out on to the viva connection experience so the first prerequisite here is to have the uh, sharepoint but again you need to have a modern sharepoint so first thing that we need to plan here is that uh, prepare your home site as well as the global navigation so that you will be able to roll out this viva connection experience to everyone second thing very much important is that modernize site for example if you are still on to the classic sharepoint you, uh, you won't be able to enable the viva connections experience to your organization so start moving to the modernization uh, again for example if you already had started your journey in uh, microsoft 365 few years back and uh, at that time classic sharepoint was the only entry point to sharepoint in that case you can think of maybe pnp modernizer kind of an solutions to get yourself modernized into um, into the modern sharepoint and at the same time we do have um, switching of sites available so you can now create any of the communication site as the modern sharepoint site to start with and then switch that as a root site and then start using that and then last point to consider here is that th there may be uh, chances that you need to uh, enable the multilingual kind of an experience because now that now a days most of the organizations have been uh, have their legs spread across uh, various continents various regions 
so everyone needs to have their local kind of and feeling so that uh, they can get the multilingual experience and then have the home site uh, with with the, some kind of a default language as english but they can decide in which uh, language they want to see their content but again one limitation even as of today that we have with home site is that we can only set one site as a home site for example even if your organization is supporting multiple languages uh, you still have to live with the limitation of having just one communication site being set as a home site probably we still have to wait for until um, q3 of this year to get the multiple home site feature being rolled out to sharepoint but until the time we'll have to live with this limitation uh, the uh, other beneficial concept here is the hub site because uh, microsoft is promoting for the uh, uh, flat hierarchy flat hierarchy that means uh, we should not have any kind of an sub sites each of the sites should be a site collection which is kind of an um, a representable entity in itself which cannot be drilled down further so let's take an example here what you can see on onto the screen is for hr hub so in that case uh, let's say hr is uh, following multiple uh, kind of responsibilities like benefits pay and compensation talent acquisition and and many other things that you see on the screen so in this case um, for example if you have been thinking of this from the classic point of view then uh, someone will create hr as the uh, top level site and then all of the functionality will be below it as a sub site but with the modern sharepoint concept we should follow the um, flat level hierarchy so that each of the site here for example benefit payload talent acquisition and everything will be uh, we will be a site collection and then now that we have multiple site collections how to club them together or how to make them a part of one unit so there the hub site comes into the picture so you can promote any of the existing site as a hub site and then all of the other uh, site collections can be uh, uh, can be patched up to that hub site all right so let us see like uh, how then we can have a home site in sharepoint okay so uh, <coughs> again to have a we do need to consider few of this. So the home site is a SharePoint <laughs> communication site that acts as a front door to your organization internet and has the special capabilities such as the ability to prioritize the news posted from the home site across the rest of the internet. So when you deploy the Viva connection, your SharePoint home sites becomes the internet landing experience inside of Microsoft Teams. So you have to consider using the landing template in the SharePoint lookbook to get started ahead so some of the important things you have to remember a sharepoint home site is required to set up the viva connection home sites are generally high traffic sites that should be optimized for the performance so before getting started if your organization does not already have a home site just plan for a home site then set the home site in your sharepoint admin center make sure your sharepoint you share the home site with everyone's in organization and when it's come to the permission so the sharepoint administrator or a hire can create a home site so with that let us get into a demo to see how you can prepare your internet again for example if you already have prepared your internet with sharepoint which is good but for example if you are starting with your journey in office 365 or uh, you haven't yet set any of your site to start with the uh, internet in that case you can consider these steps so first thing is that you need to have a communication site created in, in sharepoint so for that you can uh, si simply go to the uh, teams admin center and start creating that uh, i will not go go into those basic details but at the same time for example if you have not yet created any of the site we should act as a home site for you maybe you can consider looking at the SharePoint lookbook. So SharePoint lookbook, um, nothing but it is kind of an templates available directly from Microsoft, which you can use. So there are various templates available um, to use from the categories of organization, department, team, community solutions, and, and various. So if you haven't yet created any of your site as a home site, maybe um, home site is something where users need to uh, get more relevant news information content resources so you can um, either consider this particular template which is the perspective or maybe the landing kind of an experience through which you will be able to create those kind of an experience so using lookbook is again pretty much easy just click on the template that you want to get uh, provision to your temp 
tenant and then just click on add to your tenant and this one will just create a site for you which will look something like this and then secondly for example if you want to uh, promote any of the site as a hub site in that case uh, just select that site and then at the top you you will see a button for hub and then from here you will be able to register any of the site as a hub site or associate that site to the existing hub site the other point to discuss here is like how you can set your site as a home site. So for that in SharePoint admin center, you can quickly move to the settings menu and here we do have a home site option. And then as I said previously at this moment with the current limitation, we can have only one site being site being set as home site, but probably we will have to wait until uh, end of Q3 to see that option of having multiple home sites again why do we have multiple home sites because uh, we, we should not just think of english as the primary language but for the uh, organizations who are operating into multiple territories uh, they need to have set the local language experience to all of their users so for that reason uh, there will be a multiple home site feature coming soon but till the time we will have to uh, work with that and then once we have our uh, home site setup this will look some, something like this and then from here uh, maybe not something like this maybe something like this so from here we'll be able to show all of the news content resources very much closer to our uh, employees all right so that, that was a quick demo of how you can um, prepare your internet now that next thing is um, how to enable the sharepoint app bar and global navigation so the SharePoint app bar allows users to find the important content and the resources and dynamically displays personalized sites, news and files. So the Viva connection uses the elements from the SharePoint app bar and a global navigation for the desktop and the mobile experiences. So the SharePoint app bar elements will display in Microsoft Teams and includes the global navigation, followed sites and recommended news. On mobile devices, Viva connections use the global navigation for the resource tab. Again, some of the important points you have to remember. If your app bar is not set up, you won't see a navigation panel in desktop experience and global navigation resources in the resource tab of the Viva connection app will not display. A home site is required before you can enable and customize the SharePoint app bar. When it's come to the permission, so the site owner or a higher permission to the home site are required to enable and customize global navigation in SharePoint app bar. So with that, let's get into a quick demo of how we can enable the global navigation and SharePoint app bar. So this global navigation will be only available onto the home site. So that's the reason it is very much important to have the home site. So then uh, firstly, let's see what is mean by the app bar. So onto the left hand side of the screen, uh, what you can see here is this app bar. And then this app bar has got uh, multiple component associated associated with that. So firstly, once you set any of the site as a home site, in that case, you will be able to see at least a couple of uh, menus being added here. First one is the set of Viva connections and other one is this global navigation. So these menus will help us to set up the entire Viva connection kind of an experience. So let us first get into the global navigation. So by default, this one will be turned off. You, you will just have to turn it on. If you want to set up any of the logo, you can place it here. You can just place a title which will be visible once uh, once someone mouse over onto this icon and then there is a navigation source. So based on what kind of an uh, navigation you want to have, either it is based of, out of the home site navigation or a hub site, you can go ahead with that and then just click on the edit global navigation and then that global navigation menu will be available here. And then again out of the app bar which is available here global navigation is the only customizable option other options that we have here we we won't be able to customize it is kind of an uh, curated experience for us but uh, only this app bar will be a customizable one then again how, how to uh, maybe uh, start creating the navigation links inside that so you can just click on this plus icon by going to the specific menu where you want to get the link or the label created and then just click on that again we do have option to enable the audience targeting onto each of the uh, link or a label that we see into the global navigation so once you click on this uh, you will be able to choose the option whether you, you want to show that option as a link or a label 
So basic difference is that link is a clickable label is just the viewable. So you can specify the uh, link for the uh, address and then you can specify the name in English. But at the same time, for example, if you have enabled multilingual experience in that case, you will be able to see the translations link here. Once you click on that translations link. Whatever text that you have typed in English, you will have to type the other text in the other languages that you are supporting and then your entire global navigation will start to give you the uh, localized kind of an experience again here once you have turned on the uh, audience targeting you can specify any of the group here so group that that is mean by microsoft 365 group as you ready group or even a dynamic uh, uh, dynamic as you ready group as well so you will be able to specify all those options and then again let me just cancel it out and this is how it will look so once you click on the global navigation this is the global navigation that you will be able to see that we just have designed uh, for example if you turn this off in that case this globe clicking on this icon here will take you to the sharepoint home site sorry not home site but the start page which is something like this but once you turn on the global navigation it will just open up that global navigation and again in the app bar we do have other things for example this my sites uh, my news my files and my list so this is again kind of an my experience which is uh, very much customized to each of the user so again it uses microsoft graph in the background to get the sites which are frequently used by you as well as followed by you. Once you click on my news, it will show you all of the boosted news first and then again uh, all of the news or the topics that you follow. And again, we do have a bucketing system here like how this news appears. And then again, we do have files where it will show all of the files that you are working on shared with any of the colleague or maybe any any of the sh colleague has shared with you and then again we do have my list which will show all of the microsoft list that we have got again recently we, we have got this create feature here which is not directly a part of the uh, app bar but from here you'll be able to at least create a site document spreadsheet presentation and all those things so this was a quick demo of how you will be able to enable the global navigation and sharepoint app bar but sharepoint home site is a must to have here so with that, let's get into creation of our dashboard. So the Viva Connection dashboard enables you to create a curated experience using a dashboard cards that give your employees access to their most critical content and the tools. So these cards are designed to enable the quick task completion either by interacting with the card directly or by opening a quick view in the dashboard. So think of the Viva Connection dashboard as a digital tool set for your employees. So the Viva Connection dashboard is available on mobile platform for the board for the iOS as well as for the Android in the Viva Connection Teams apps and on the desktop as a web part. So this web part can be integrated into a SharePoint home site which then is exposed as a part of Viva Connection for desktop experience in Microsoft Teams. So let's see this dashboard authoring. So the uh, dashboard is authorized in a SharePoint home site on a dashboard page. A site editor can create the dashboard, add the cards in the size and the layout of the choice and target the cards to a specific audiences. Okay, so let's get into a demo and see how we'll be able to create dashboard and then add the cards. So again, you need to be on to the home site in order to create a um, create a dashboard. So once you have the home site, then you will be able to see this menu in the settings called as Setup Viva Connections. Once you click on that Setup Viva Connections, if you have not set up your dashboard, uh, the op option here will be to create dashboard. Once you have the dashboard created, uh, it will take you to the dashboard by clicking View Dashboard. So dashboard is nothing but a simple page which is available in uh, SharePoint under side pages called as sideboard dashboard.aspx. Again, for example, if you rename this page, what will happen? The association between those two will be broken and then again, you will, you will have to create another dashboard. Again, if you rename that page back to the dashboard or SPX, it will not work. So every time as of today, we have to follow the process to get the dashboard created and then dashboard contains various lightweight um, 
cards here. So these are the cards that you can see uh, which which are placed here. And then these cards are with the sizes of medium and large. So all of the smaller cards that you can see on the screen, those are the medium size. And then the one which you see, this one is a custom card, uh, which is of the larger size. And then again, we do have experience for this to be seen how it should be seen for the mobile users as well as the desktop users because Viva connections we want to have this experience enabled for information workers as well as the frontline workers so for the mobile experience this is how the experience will look like so many of the times i have seen people getting confused between uh, mobile experience and desktop experience so it, it doesn't mean that we will be able to create a separate experience for desktop and a separate experience for mobile no, not at all it will be just the placement of cards that we want to see onto the mobile and desktop let's say for example if i add any of the card from here so it could be of any any of the cards that we have so seen so far today uh, it is not like that it is only available for mobile it will be available for desktop as well but just that we need to see how the experience should be for mobile users because now for example if you see here this is kind of a broken experience wherein I just have uh, one card here on a medium size card placed here and then the large size card placed here. I, I should have done it like this way to, to have the better experience for, for everyone because now that I'm consuming more space than, than what is desired. So this is the only difference in mobile and desktop experience. It is not like we have a separate da dashboard for mobile and separate dashboard for desktop, not at all like that. Uh, again, at the same time, right now, desktop also support uh, multilingual. So again, you can click on the translation and then you will be able to create a dashboard page for various languages that you support so that everyone in the organization will be able to see the dashboard in their own preferred language. Uh, and I guess uh, we already had covered like how to add the cards and everything, but still I can go ahead. So this is the desktop experience and then you can just click on add a card and here we have various sets of card that can be added here. For example, approvals, assigned tasks, team apps, uh, top news and everything. So uh, I will not go through that experience one more time, but we will probably spend that time on how to create your own SPFS kind of a solution and then once you are happy with designing your dashboard click preview just to see how this one looks like into desktop and mo mobile experience at the same time for example if you have the audience targeting enabled on each of the card on the dashboard make sure that how that experience looks like for everyone so now that I just have one audience targeting enabled so this is the experience for uh, that audience targeting um, users and this is the experience without that so once i click this you can see that i have more cards which is available for that audiences which is i guess uh, this card the insights card okay so once i take take away that experience uh, you won't be able to see the insights card okay so make sure that how your uh, card looks like on desktop on mobile as well as for each of the audiences that you have defined uh, for your uh, uh, dashboard then again the other thing is like now that we have this dashboard once I again come back to the uh, home page so here we can uh, get that dashboard added as a web part so just edit your home page and then just add the uh, web part called as a dashboard and then you will be able to see this dashboard here at the same time don't just limit yourself to adding only dashboards here but maybe add few of the other helpful web parts for your customer because uh, sorry not customer but for your users because this is the experience that you are enabling for your users so try to place uh, web parts which will show the news as well as feed for viva connections and everything so what is mean by feed for viva connections is something like uh, now that we want to show the relevant news, articles, resources, content, uh, which is relevant to each of the individual onto this Viva connection. So definitely uh, it, it is not just the home site where we will keep publishing the news, but at the same time in your organization, you must be using the feature of organizational news sites. So th that could be number of organization news site that can be set. So do set up those news, news sites and then from those news sites, all of those news will come and then they will be able to be shown to your users as the feed so for example here you can see that this one are the boosted news that we have and these are coming from the news site not just from the home site so don't forget to again um, 
take advantage of the uh, home site as well as the news site as well. OK, and again for the news site, uh, we, we do have another card here called as uh, top news. So all of the boosted news will start appearing into your top news. So don't forget to make home site as well as the uh, organizational level news site and then don't forget to boost your content so that it will start appearing for the users. So with that, let's get into how to well prepare that content so that everyone will feel engaged because now that we just have enabled this experience, but keeping the engagement of user is very much important because now that for example, I see this content, but even though if I open up this page a week after if I still going to get the same content probably you everyone will start losing the interest so let us see how we will be able to maintain that interest and then what are those feeds from where we will be able to surface the content to microsoft viva so in the viva connection apps users will see a feed that is personalized and relevant content personalized to them so the feed automatically balances the refresh and the engaging content with the corporate communications to keep the user engaged while also ensuring that the users see the most important messages so the feeds requires the usage of modern sharepoint and either sharepoint news or a yammer community so for the best and most engaging experience you can use the boot we recommend creating or using an existing organization news site so that the users get the most important news. So some of the tips over here in Yammer target the conversations you want to display in the feed by using a Yammer boost and feature options on the Yammer community pages. Use the news boost to elevate SharePoint news and announcement into a priority positions in the feed. Use the video news links in SharePoint to create an engaging viewing experience in the feed. You can use the feed web part to display the personalized news and announcements to viewers on the home site. When it's come to the permissions, the permission requires to create a Yammer community vary depending on your organization and permissions for the SharePoint news. So to create an organization news site, you need a SharePoint administrator permission. To create a new stories, you need page edit permission or the higher. All right, so now that we, we have been talking everything on to the uh, SharePoint site, uh, now that we have our intern ready, now that let us see how we'll be able to enable that experience in Microsoft Teams. Because the whole idea of Microsoft Viva is that everything should be at one centralized place and then Microsoft Teams should be at the center of everything. So let us go into Microsoft Teams side and then how let us see how we'll be able to enable that experience. So previously th there was a PowerShell given by Microsoft which we can run and then um, it, it can create a package which we can a zip file which we can just add to the Microsoft Teams admin center and get the app enabled for them. But the limitation with that was it was just the desktop only experience. Now that the experience has been pretty much simplified and then we just have a single Simple app available in Microsoft Teams, which will be able to uh, enable directly and then use that in our um, Teams experience. So let's get into that demo and see how we'll be able to do that. So for that, I'm into the Teams Admin Center, and then here I will be able to see all of the apps under uh, Teams app and then the Manage app. So here, just search for Viva, and you will be able to see all of the uh, apps for the Viva suit here. Click on the Viva connections and then you will be able to see that by default this one will be blocked click or toggle this to make it allow and then again uh, this is not just the thing uh, first thing is just to enable but second thing is just to also customize that experience so that how your app should look like for all of your users so you can just click on this pencil icon or just click on this three arrows click actions and click customize here you will be able to have the user interface defined for your viva connections that how it should look in viva when you will pin that into the left left rail of microsoft teams so you can specify the name you can give the uh, website policy url you can specify the icon you can specify the action color and everything so all those customizations options are available probably these options are not available for all of the apps probably you can check it out this is the viva connection is the uh, one of that app for which customization options are available. And then thirdly that we just need to make this app available to our end users. So for that you can directly uh, get into the permission policy, uh, get into the uh, Viva connection. Oh, uh, and then yeah, miss why I'm here because now that we have this Viva connections app enabled, but probably we don't want this 
app to be enabled for everyone. So this is just a hint for you to make this app only available to a pilot users inside your uh, organization and then start the broader rollout, right? So to make it available for everyone to get it pinned onto the left rail, just go to the setup policies, open up any of the policies that you have uh, created or just head to the global policy. And then from here, you can just add that app uh, if you want to get it installed for everyone. And then you can add that Viva connection app here and then make a placement where you want to place that particular Viva connections app. And according to the Microsoft recommendation, you should have it at the top because whenever anyone who logs into the teams for first time, they will be able to see the Viva connections experience as the first experience uh, for their Microsoft Teams and then from there they can decide where to go uh, go about. So with this kind of settings, this is how the Viva connections experience will look like. So this is the Viva connection experience. When I first launched my Microsoft Teams, I was able to get into the Viva connections directly and this then this one will directly surpass your uh, SharePoint site. And again, once you click on Viva connections, this will show you the um, global navigation and as you keep scrolling down this will show the my site my news my files and my list as well so this is the sim simplified experience of just having your sharepoint site sharepoint home site into microsoft teams directly so with that uh, let's get into the other part how to um, enable this mobile settings for everyone so the Viva Connection app create a custom map in Microsoft Teams that fits the needs of your organization and your organization custom map will appear as a branded company app in a Microsoft Teams app center. So when it's come to the permissions, so the site editor or a higher permission to the dashboard sites are required to choose the settings for the mobile experience. Yeah, so for the end user guidance, to help make end users aware of this new resource and provide a guidance on what icon in the Teams app bar is your organization instance of the Viva connection, then help the end users to understand how to use the desktop experience. Well, so with that, let's come to the last experience of this um, session on how to build the rich experience for Viva connections with SharePoint framework or SPFX. So developer can now extend the Microsoft Viva connections for building a engaging kind of an experiences with a widely adopted SharePoint framework or SPFX. So SharePoint framework uh, version 1.13 onwards has introduced uh, support for building solutions to customize as well as extend um, Microsoft Viva connections with something Maybe called as uh, SS. Yeah, sure. So uh, this SS or adaptive card extensions are a new SharePoint framework component type which enables developer to build rich native extensions to Viva connections dashboard as well as uh, SharePoint pages. So through which we'll be able to create adaptive card framework with declarative JSON schema to generate the UI. So the developer can focus on the business logic rather than just thinking of complex JSON building on their own. So these are the three type of templates available, basic card, image card, and the primary text template. The uh, scaffolding experience remains the same just that um, with this you will select the basic card template and the adaptive card extension are the choices to start creating your uh, ace kind of an experience. So with that let's get into the demo and see how we can um, do that very easily. So for that let me just get into my developer environment and here you can see I have one or at least couple of uh, SS available. So this is a simple one which will show the steps. Uh, so this one is nothing but the uh, card view. Once I click on to this button, this will open up something called as a quick view. And then through this quick view, I will be able to take further action and open up more and more quick views, right? So this is the simple experience of how we'll be able to uh, create those kind of an experience. So with the basic scaffolding, this is the solution that will get generated. So this is the simple solution that, that we have generated. Almost the code structure remains the same that, that we have seen for web parts as well as extension. So let me just walk you through the um, important files in this uh, scaffolded solution. So the very much basic class here is this um, um, adaptive card extension class which is extending from the base adaptive card extension and this one has got a couple of properties for key properties and t state which is the uh, set of persisted uh, properties of components as well as state of the uh, ace card 
uh, in order to render the um, ace card or render the card view we, we have a method called as a render card so this returns kind of a string identifier to the registered view so all of the views we have to register here so that we'll be able to use them and then after that let's get into the card view which is the view that that we have seen here the, the card view so this is the card view uh, which will uh, which must be registered within the constructor of the on init and then again uh, it must again extend from the basic card view or the uh, image card view or a primary text view and then again it has got a uh, few few generics available um, like the other classes the major method here is this data this is the gator only kind of a method to uh, which is must be implemented by a card view and then again on to the card we can have the we can also have the card buttons and then the card buttons property determines the number of cards that can appear onto the card and everything and then lastly we have this on card selection method which determines what should happen when the card is clicked and then once this card is clicked we we do get open up one uh, view which is called as a quick view so this is the code for that quick view which is again extending the base adaptive uh, card view and then again it has got uh, properties state as well as data being passed from the card and then this one has got simple uh, methods like template which is a json format kind of a template so you can either have the inline template or you can separately define the uh, template into the json format and then once you click on that this will open up that json and data will be passed from your quick view to to the json which will get filled up and then you will be able to see this kind of an experience but with that i will um, maybe uh, keep the other part for the next session wherein we, we wherein we are going to deep dive into how to create those but then here are a few of the quick references if in case you want to uh, learn more about microsoft viva or have a overview of viva connections at the same time uh, that there is a good microsoft learn module available for viva connection specifically and for example if you want to just see that how i have uh, enabled this viva connections for microsoft teams desktop experience as well as even for the mobile experience uh, here are a few of the references to my blog and then uh, how to create that adaptive card extension with spfx so do follow these two blogs to get more information and uh, with that thank you very much for uh, having us here thanks to all of our sponsors for um, for, for their generosity